Hello everyone and welcome back to my rescue story, Pet World 3D. And I am so surprised at how many of you guys were so worried when we started working with the wildlife version of this game that we wouldn't be coming back. But of course we are. You guys really love this game. I love reading all of your amazing adoption stories about the different animals that your families have adopted and how happy everybody has been together. And it's so exciting to have the rush of feeding and taking care of all these animals as quickly as we can and then turning around and finding them homes. So we're gonna dive back in and the professor is happy to see us working away at the office as always. Maybe he's writing a book about how awesome we are. And he is saying that we've got Mickey, Ellie, Mishka, Lizzie, Bagpuss. Bagpuss? Is that a cat? I'm gonna have to find, okay, one of the first things we're gonna have to do today is find Bagpuss. Holly, Maya, uh, Cosmia, Emma, and Ratty. Ratty. Is that a hamster? A hamster named Ratty, just to be ironic, have arrived today. It's so nice that you're here. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. All right, Professor, we're on this. All right, so let's rush to the back. All right, first thing I want to do is let the puppies out to play. So let's grab the dog food, the cleaning set for the dogs, dog brush really quickly, a little dog treat. And then let's go get the water. Oh, and actually, I need to let the foal out to play too. Oh, my goodness. Man, when there's so many animals first thing, it's such a rush. Oh, I love keeping so busy. All right, let's rush down. I'm going to let the dogs out really quickly. All right, what's your name, Pup Pup? I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure we had you yesterday. Hello, dear. It's Missy. Okay, and her coat is okay-ish, and she needs just a little bit more dog food. Let's toss her a dog treat, get her confidence up. And this would be Jack. So hello, Jack. Let's go ahead and get your food and water all prepared. Oh, he's really hungry. Jack, you could use a bit more food. There you go. All right, we're going to open this up so he can go play. And let's see. Let's come over here. Coat care is horrible. It's Maya. So she's a new dog. This dog has a red bite mark behind its ear, and it keeps scratching there. What could it be? Hmm... If it's behind the ear, um, let's see, scratching too hard, neck brace, a swelling, let's try an anti-inflammatory cream, which ironically, I think that's the very, very first thing we've ever done that hasn't needed a veterinarian's attention. All right, we're going to give you a little bit more food, sweetie, and then let's give you a good brushing. Whoops, that's right. A good brushing. Because you're brand new to the shelter. And it was so exciting to see how many of you guys knew how important it was to keep the kennels clean from volunteering. From actual experience that you guys have from having volunteered at real shelters. And of course keeping it clean so that the animals themselves, there you go sweetie, can be nice and tidy is important. But it's also important for that impression. And I was so proud of so many of you for saying, yeah, I volunteer at dog shelters. I've gone with my parents. I've gone myself. I know exactly what you mean when you say like it's super important to keep it looking nice because when people come, they'll have a good impression of the animal. Whoops, let's get the treat instead. If the area is nice and clean. All right, speaking of nice and clean, look at how messy it is in here. Huh? Look at how messy it is in here. Whoops, hey, I'm trying to feed the hay to this, this horse here. What's going on? All right, and actually you could use a little bit more weight. Furry, how am I ever going to find you? Ever gonna find you a home? Are we just gonna keep you forever? Is that how it's gonna go, Furry? It's kind of amazing to me how Furry's been here for so long. Alright, and another quick brushing. So you've got a nice little groom job done. Activity and confidence needs to go up just a bit more, so there you go. Alright, we're doing good, doing good. Of course, as soon as I start saying that, people are gonna start pouring in, and we won't have enough. <laughs> We won't have enough room for everybody. All right, let's do cats next because, man, those litter boxes, they can really smell. And I've actually volunteered at more uh, cat sanctuaries, like sanctuaries specifically for cats, than I have for anything else. So there's Salem, Michigan. Bagpuss! Bagpuss is a cat! Hello, Bagpuss! It is very interesting to meet you. You almost have, like, a sort of Lord of the Rings sort of name. Okay, so it's a black cat, one year old. Uh, the cat's poor nose keeps running. It keeps sneezing and its eyes are red and sticky. It looks very poorly. Um, we should, like, make sure it goes to the vet so that if it does have cat flu, that isn't something super serious that it could transmit to the other cats. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give him one little extra feeding. And let's get him all cleaned up. Clean up those nasty little eyes that have all the gunky stuff on them. But yeah, probably my favorite sanctuary I ever volunteered at was an all-cat sanctuary in Austin, Texas. Um... 
Shadow Cats, actually. Uh, it's called Shadow Cats. That was years and years and years ago. I was just a, a little summer volunteer person who was there for just a little while. Oh, and it's a cat lady, I bet. <gasps> I always used to have a cat, and now my dear Roger has departed. God bless him. And I thought a pet would be good for me and give, him a, give me a bit of company. All right, Megan, age 78. Let me go ahead and figure out. Let's see. Let's go with um. Let's go with this kitty. Let's go with this kitty. Let's see if we can get Measy, who's apparently starving to death. All right, there we go. Feeling good. And then, what do you think about this kitty? Perfect. Wonderful. They were a match made in heaven. All right, let's get this area all cleaned up. Oh, look at that kitty run by. Bagpuss is just like playing outside. Like woohoo! All right, your health is good. Did I forget to feed the cats yesterday or something? Jeez, everybody's so hungry today. All right, let's get all the tangles and knots out of your fur. But Shadow Cats really impressed me because uh, the person who runs it is a veterinarian and his wife, and they just would end up with so many cats left on their doorstep at their vet clinic that they finally opened up their home. They completely remodeled their house 100%. All right, let's see. Mishka. Um, vomiting and diarrhea. Fur looks dull. Sounds like worms. Remember, guys, don't let your cats go outside and eat all of those little animals unless you really want them to get worms, because that's where most of the cases come from. All right, we'll get this coat all cleaned up. But yeah, I, sh I volunteered at Shadow Cats, and it was just a residential home that a veterinarian had completely transformed. He had added so many extra porches, enclosed outdoor areas, uh, basically everything except his bedroom had been turned into a cat sanctuary for the cats. All right, let's see. And actually in the bedroom, they had five or six cats that lived in their gigantic bedroom and a living room that was attached to it who were all um, feline leukemia positive and not allowed to interact with other cats. But they took them in and they would keep their, their special cats that they just fell in love with and wanted to keep personally uh, who had feline leukemia inside their bedrooms where it would be like safe for them to, to be. So that was always very interesting. I already have a cat at home, but she's a bit nervous and shy with strangers. She gets along well with other cats, so I would like to find her a companion. What about this guy? Nope, he still needs a little bit of attention. All right, well, what about Salem? Salem, you sound perfect for this situation. Boom. Man, it is cat day. I'm just talking about cats, and people are coming in to adopt the cats. But yeah, I thought they were amazing, and feline leukemia in a shelter is a death sentence for a cat because it means that that cat's going to get put down pretty much right away because it is a very contagious disease it's a very deadly disease um you want to that's one of the vital things to make sure that your kitties hello hugo to make sure that your kitties have been treated for because it, it is it's a very horrible disease i had a cat die of it uh he was a, a stray kitten and so his mom had feline leukemia whoops overfed the bunny a little bit his mom had feline leukemia when she was pregnant, and so all of her babies, when they were born, contracted it. And so Friday, my wonderful, beloved cat Friday, who you guys have probably heard me talk about, had feline leukemia and he died of it, and it was extremely difficult to see, because it's not an easy death. Um, and so if you guys do have cats, make sure they have been treated with that, that vaccine. It's not hard to do, uh, to get them treated with the vaccine. It's not difficult. It's pretty cheap. I think it's like $30 at most places and it makes a total difference because then you stop the disease spreading to your animal and you stop it spreading to all the other animals because it is so immensely contagious. So just FYI, make sure your kitties have been treated for feline leukemia. It is not a good way to go. Um, and it is so immensely contagious. You even have to make sure you wash your hands with like sanitizer uh, after petting a cat that has it because you could give it to another cat. So get those shots guys get those shots it's very important all right looks like we have a little bit of a whoops bladder infection or wind here so we need to make sure that this bunny has enough enough healthy fiber in its diet it does gotta give it a little bit of coat care so hang on sir all right i got distracted with my public service announcement about making sure your kitties have been treated so they don't get feline leukemia because it is so sad it is so sad and it's such a little thing. It's just one little shot, maybe maybe a few if they're going to do the course treatments. And it's not hard to do, just people don't do it. Paul, age 11. 
I always used to want a little brother or sister, which I can't help you with, Paul, but that didn't work. Anyway, my parents have said I could choose a hamster. I can even decide what kind myself. Can we sh Can you show me your animals? Of course, Paul. Let's see. Luis? 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 Let's see. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. I'm going to have to change their water really quickly, Paul, so don't you, don't you worry. All right. I'll be back, Bun Buns. All right. And... There we go, and I'm gonna need, let's see, hamsters. There we go, hamster stuff. All right, Paul, let's go pick you out. I think Toby looks like a good hamster for Paul. Yeah, look at Toby, he's like, yeah, I am. Look at me show off how cute I am, oh yeah. All right, boom, perfect. <laughs> and the birds, oh my goodness, they want, their, they want their food, they want their toys so they can start making a mess, so we'll hurry over there. All right, hi, little guy. Oh, I like your colors. All right, so what's up with you? Red marks and swellings on the skin. Fungal infection. Make sure you keep those cages clean, you guys. All right, so you're going to be okay. Oh, I like the colors on you. You're a cutie patootie. All right, let's see. Needs more food, Holly. Fur around its bottom is brown and sticky. That actually does sound uh, like diarrhea caused from uh, stress. And that is exactly, it's a very deadly disease and that's exactly the disease that I told you guys, if you have a hamster, buy the, um, like buy a certain, there's, there's a vitamin that you can put in the water and that is exactly what it's for, is to make sure that they don't have that diarrhea disease. It's caused by stress and handling, so if you get a brand new, brand new ham ham, it's a very good idea to make sure that you have that medicine, because then it helps it to adjust, keeps its immune system up. Because in a small prey animal like that, a little, a little symptom like having, um, having diarrhea can be a death sentence. Oh man, it's such a dreary day today. Basically, I'm saying take good care of your animals. Dum, da -dum, da -dum. All right, on to more cheerful topics. <laughs> Siri's, Siri's really focused on making sure the animal's well-being is, is tended to today. So on to more cheerful topics. Let's see what this little girl would like. Would she perhaps like a bunny? Uh, oh, a guinea pig! I've come to choose a guinea pig. My best friend has already got some, and I think they are so cute. Can we, you show me your guinea pigs? Of course I can, little girl. Uh, let me go ahead. Here, you want to help me pet this bunny? Here, you can see how we pet a bunny. Are you sure you don't want a bunny? But no, she wants a guinea pig, so we'll get her a guinea pig. All right, and I hear furry making some noise in the distance over there. All right, I'm never going to finish taking care of these bunnies. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so let's rush over. And we're going to get her a guinea pig really quickly. And then we will take a quick lunch break and be back next time to be able to finish taking care of the reptiles and see how many other adoptions we can uh, finish up. I think... What about Emma? Emma is not feeling well. So not Emma. Uh, okay, here we go. Now this little guy, Romina, who's starving apparently. What is up with everybody being so hungry today? I think this is the perfect fit. Ta-da! All right, so that made them pretty happy. All right, so we're gonna finish taking care of these guinea pigs and the birds, and oh, look at the cats playing in the cat yard. And I will see you guys next time when we'll finish up taking care of everybody for the day and hopefully getting lots more successful adoptions. Remember, take care of your cats and, and hamsters and everybody else, and I will see y'all next time. Bye-bye.